Hi students, um, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, depends on what time you're watching this lesson. We're going to try a different format of a lesson today. Um, I was talking with Jules about two weeks ago maybe, and he expressed again how it can be very easy to understand my specific pronunciation, um, but going out into the community still is causing more difficulties for us with our listening. So what we've done before on the YouTube channel is we've done dictations, which are a very purposeful, focused listening. You're thinking about the grammar of each specific um, phrase. When you take apart that reduced phrase, what does that mean? We've also done um, pronunciation lessons, which is thinking about the specific sound of particular words. So what we're going to do with this, I'm going to classify as a listening lesson, um, not a focused listening like dictation, but listening for the overall meaning, the overall concept, as opposed to listening for the specific pieces of grammar. Um, we've done a similar activity in the classroom before where I've read to you a story about a family or about a situation, and then I've asked you to share with your partner what was the story about, what was happening, who was in the story. Um, I was trying to think about how could I give you the most beneficial, the most enjoyment um, in this listening activity also. So what I'm going to do with these small listening lessons is just tell you stories tell you stories about my life or tell you stories about previous students. Um, I'll try to keep them funny because when we're laughing, we're more relaxed, we're more comfortable, but I won't focus on slowing down my pronunciation or being clear and concise with you. I'm just going to talk. So hopefully it will give you a nice practice with listening for that big concept, listening for that main idea, and then maybe going back to the beginning, listening again for the details. So this is what I'll recommend to you. I'm going to tell you four different stories today. After I tell you each story, you should pause, ask yourself, what was the main points? What were the main points? Maybe you rewind and you listen to me tell the story again. Maybe you jot down a few sentences. What did I say? What was I talking about? Or if you really want, just listen to all four of the stories straight through. But if you do want to make it a focused lesson that you're working on at home, this is the structure, this is the format. Listen to one story, stop, make a few notes. What did you hear? What was I talking about? Rewind listen to the same story again, make a few additional notes, what was I talking about, and then write out five, eight, ten sentences um, using beautiful grammar to retell the story. And you could do that for each of the four stories. Okay, let's jump into our first story here. All right, so the stories that we're going to talk about today, we're going to call Adventures in Teaching English or Miss Adventures in Teaching English. Um, and I'm going to talk to you about clothing today because I've got some funny stories to share with you. I actually shared a few of these with my afternoon class, maybe about a week and a half ago. And I think we laughed for probably 10 or 15 minutes just enjoying the awkward situations that we get into when we're wearing clothing and we don't understand the English on the shirt that we're wearing. Um, at the end, I'm going to actually tell you a story about myself and my own misadventure in wearing a different language on my shirt and how that created an awkward situation for me as well. So um, the big advice as we go into these stories is that if you don't understand the words on the shirt that you're wearing, you shouldn't be wearing it. You shouldn't have worn it. You should have been wearing something else. Okay, so um, 
The first story I want to tell you about is a student who was in my afternoon class about three years ago. Um, she was a mom and she only had one child at the time that she was in my class. Uh, she hasn't been in my class for about two years now, maybe two and a half. Um, so I don't know if she has a second child now or not, but she actually came to my class one day wearing a shirt very similar to this shirt on the left. Um, really cute shirt, a big old heart across the stomach of the shirt. Um, and if you understand this phrase already, then you know why it's such an awkward situation. But this shirt said, um, bun in the oven. So I asked her to come out with me in the hallway and I said, do you understand what the shirt means that you're wearing? And she, and she said, no, it's just beautiful really beautiful heart across the belly and um I asked her are you pregnant and she said no no not at all and I said well bun in the oven actually means you're pregnant so you're walking around wearing this shirt and <laughs> mm -mm, not pregnant not pregnant um we use this phrase not as a joke but it's a very common idiom in English to mean pregnant. So poor woman in my afternoon class walking around wearing this shirt that to everybody that speaks English natively means she's pregnant, was not pregnant. Needless to say, she never wore that shirt to my class again. All right. I can't just pick on women. We have to be equal. So my second story is about a young man who was in the morning class. And actually, he was not in my class for very long. Um, he was in Teacher Carey's class for quite a while and then was in my class just for a couple of weeks, but um, came to school one day wearing a perfectly fine t-shirt um, with a picture, a computer graphic style of a picture of a bride and a groom holding hands, um, very similar to this picture. And I don't know what he was thinking. If he was thinking that it was just really cute, if he was thinking that it was um, respectful, I don't know. But across the bottom of the shirt is written, game over. Now, if you play video games, you're going to understand that game over means something pretty negative. So in a video game, game over means your character has died, life is over. You have to start again, something is completely broken, or pretty much bad. So, again, young man walking around with this shirt on, maybe, and he just thought it was riding a groom. Um, I did ask him, again, do you understand what your shirt means? Um, took him out in the hallway, and I explained to him, you know, what this is saying is that, in your opinion, when a husband and wife, when a man and a woman get married, that's the end. Life is over. Like, might as well die because it's the end of your life. Oh, no teacher, no teacher, no teacher. <laughs> okay, just so you know, that's what your shirt means. Needless to say again, I don't think I saw him wearing the same shirt. Um, the last one, I don't remember if this was a young man in my morning class or in my afternoon. Um, but a young man was at school with the shirt on that said something along these lines of hot flashes, hot, hot flashes. So there's two different pieces to explaining this awkward situation. Um, the first is the idea in France of what's called haute, haute couture or high fashion, meaning like really, really beautiful things are considered haute couture, um, high, high, high fashion. And then there's the concept of hot, hot flashes, which is the time when a woman is a little bit older in her life, like 50, 55, experiencing hormonal changes, and then the body temperature of the woman just extremely rises, drops, rises, is called hot flashes. So this young man um, walking around wearing this shirt that said something similar to high fashion, very beautiful fashion, but was intended to be a shirt for maybe a 50 or 60 year old woman to wear as a joke about her metabolic and hormonal changes. Again, take a student out in the hallway, 
Do you understand what you should be in? Okay, maybe we shouldn't learn that one again. Um, I don't have a picture to show you about my last story. So the last story is about myself. Um, a lot of my students, you know that I was traveling in France. Um, I actually went to France twice. I went once at the end of high school for a three week trip where we just traveled around with a bunch of other um, students from my high school and my high school professor. And I also traveled in university and spent a semester living in the south of France. So when I went during high school, um, it was the early 2000s. Um, this was 2003 and Asian culture, especially Japanese culture and Chinese culture um, was extremely, extremely popular in the United States at that time. Early 2000s, 2001, 2002, um, anime, manga, Japanese cartoons, Chinese um, video games became extremely, extremely popular with young adults in the United States. Um, people got tattoos of Chinese letters or Chinese symbols, um, Japanese kanji, and many times people were putting images on their body in a permanent tattoo that they didn't understand as well. Um, thankfully, I did not put a tattoo of any Chinese language on my body, but I, when I was traveling in France, found this extremely adorable tank top that I absolutely loved and um, Japanese writing down the side uh, because older styles of Japanese writing can be written from top to bottom where the letters come down kind of in a vertical column. So this was 2003. I continued to wear this shirt probably for two years and it was one of my favorites. So I wore it all the time. Um, I wore it through my whole first year of college into my second year of college. Um, about, about the middle of my second year, there was a student that I knew who spoke Japanese and I'm wearing this tank top and he's laughing at me and he said, Amy, I'm sorry, but do you know what it says on your shirt? And I said, no, I didn't. I just thought it was beautiful and Japanese writing down the side of my shirt. And he said, um, it says restaurant, like you're a meal. Okay, needless to say, I did not order, I did not wear that shirt again. Um, awkward situations that we can all find ourselves in if we don't understand the English on a sign, on a panel, um, on a shirt that we put onto ourselves. If we wear something in a different language that we don't understand it, Americans do this all the time. We wear something with Arabic script or something with Chinese script, something with Japanese script on it. No concept of what it means. Um, and we're walking around completely embarrassed when we finally find out what it actually means. Okay. If you took these as a listening activity, as a listening exercise, um, let me know in the comments what you thought about the stories. Let me know which was your favorite story. Um, I've got a few different ideas written down for this type of listening activity. Um, just trying to talk and talk and talk and talk and talk so that you have continuous listening practice where I'm not thinking about my pronunciation. I'm not thinking about my speech. I'm just talking to you and you're hearing more of my natural pronunciation instead of my um, structured classroom pronunciation. So again, let me know in the comments what you thought, if you liked this quick video, uh, if you didn't like this quick video, if you have questions for me that you'd like me to answer, if you wanna know specific stories about me um, or things that you would like me to tell about in a future listening lesson, let me know. As always, take care students, bye.